We're going to be making a crib sheet today and here's what you'll need. After you've gathered all of your materials, we'll need to start cutting out. So with your unwashed cotton, I use 100% cotton for all my crib sheets unless I'm using Minky, but that, um, those dimensions are a little bit different. So send me a message if you're looking to make a Minky crib sheet. Anyways, I cut a length of 69 inches. And so let's do that right now. So with your fabric, now you will fold it together so that all the corners are matching like so. And then we'll be cutting a square out of these corners. So we're gonna bring it together and make sure it's lined up correctly. And then I like to use the ruler on the cutting board mat as just a reference to help me line it up to make sure that everything's straight. And then we will cut a square of 8.75. So I have a square ruler. Um, you can also download the PDF and I've created a square for you that you can cut out and you can use that too. So let's go. All right, so we are done cutting now and you you will have four squares cut out of your fabric. And what you'll do with each corner, because these are the corners of the crib sheet, is you'll take the right sides and you'll put them together. And you see that I've left the selvage on and that's because cotton fabrics nowadays are a little bit um, slimmer on the widths and so you'll want that extra width to wrap underneath your crib sheet or your crib mattress. And you won't tell, it, you won't see it at all. So this is what it looks like with right sides together and I recommend if this is your first project that you pin these um, corners together. So I will pin the first one. Here's what your pinned corner looks like. Now do this to all four sides if this is your first project and we'll take it to the sewing machine and we'll go in a quarter inch so you'll find that marker on your sewing machine or on your serger and so we have a quarter inch seam allowance. We're here at the serger and so we'll turn it on and you just keep it on your normal settings. Now you want to be really careful because pins, if your um, blade hits a pin, then it ruins your blade. And so you'll want to make sure that you take out those pins before you start surging. So as you can see, I've just lined up my um, fabric to the edge because that's about a quarter inch seam allowance on my serger and then I'll just get to it. And this is what your seam will look like on the outside and then on the correct side it'll look like. After you finish your corners what you'll do if you have a serger is you'll serge around the entire key, um, the entire edge so it's a finished edge so this is what it looks like currently and then you'll just serge as close as you can usually a quarter inch seam um, with your serger after you finish serging the edge of your crib sheet we'll move to the ironing board where we will um, help iron down or press the casing so that we can sew it shut and then install the elastic so this is the right side of your fabric and this is the inside of your fabric. You're going to lay the fabric down right side down on the ironing board and then we will create a casing with um, the surged edge of about a half inch. You could even do five eighths inch, it just depends what you wanna do. The big kicker is you just want to make sure that when you sew and create this permanent casing that you can still put the quarter inch elastic, run it through. So that is really important to remember. If you haven't surged or, um, around the whole edge of your crib sheet, what you'll do is you will um, first press down a quarter inch and then you will press again. And so it'll look like this, that you'll have a nice edge, a finished edge and no raw edges. And so you will be pressing all together about three quarters of an inch. All right, at the ironing board, like I mentioned earlier, you'll put the right side down 
That's the best option, I feel like. And then you'll extend the entire crib sheet length from one end of the ironing board to the other. And the great thing is your standard ironing board is about the same length as a crib sheet. And so you have the whole crib sheet on. And then if you need a ruler, get a ruler to measure out 5 8 inch or 1 half inch. And then you'll just start ironing and then you'll iron the whole entire edge until you're finished. So, get to it. We're done pressing our casing, so it'll look something a little bit like this if you surged. And if not, it'll look similar, except you won't have a surged edge if you use a sewing machine and you did the double flip. So now we'll go over to the sewing machine and what we'll do is we'll have a seam allowance of about um, just a little under what we did. So if you had a half inch, it'll be just a little bit um, less than a half inch. And if you did five eighths, then it'll probably be somewhere around a half inch for your seam allowance. And you'll just sew along the edge um, and leave at the very end a gap opening. So that's where we'll stick the elastic and thread it through. So I like to start at the corner, at one of the corners. It doesn't matter which one, in my opinion. Um, and so I'll start by putting in a pin at the corner, just before one of the corners. So I know that's where I'm going to be stopping. And then I will start my initial um, seam with the sewing machine just a little bit after. So I'll create a pretty good size about oh, a little less than an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch of a gap. So let's go. Here's the pin. I'm going to set it just a little bit after this seam and then I'm going to start sewing and go back to secure. And there we go. So now I'm here at the pin and I'm going to stop and take it out, go forward a little bit, go backwards. And we have our seams. Okay, so what we'll do now is you'll measure out 80 inches of elastic and then you'll thread it through your elastic threader. I like to tie a knot at the end of mine so I can keep it pretty taut when I thread it through. And then just make sure as you thread it through the casing that you don't lose it um, the other end inside of the casing because then you'll just have to pull it all the way back out and start over again. So what you're going to do is you're going to find that opening and then you'll thread it through and bunch so here we go. I'm going to thread it through and I'm going to start bunching this. And then you hold the tip and you pull the other side. So you bunch again. If you have a safety pin, you don't have a, um, a threader, then it'll just take a little bit more time and you'll bunch more frequently and pull more frequently. And you pull again, and you just keep on going. It takes about a few minutes, two or three. Once you've come to the end, um, just pull it through um, a good amount, and then you're going to undo your knot. Uh, another suggestion would be to, which I've done. Uh, there we go. I just cut it because the knot gets a little tight and I don't like to deal with it. So now you will have two ends of elastic and you'll need to secure them. So you're going to overlap them. I overlap them about uh, 5 eighths of an inch. And then you'll go to your sewing machine and with a zigzag stitch, you will stitch back and forth up and down about five times. You could probably do it a little less, but I really like to make sure it's secure because you wrap that under and I want it to last for a long time. Mm -hmm. 
and then back, forward, back, forward, back. It could look like this. Then what you'll do is you'll pull through and make sure that goes through the way you want it to go. You can clip the ends, but you don't have to clip the ends. And then you evenly distribute the elastic. You can also do this after you've enclosed that gap. Um, either way. Then you'll go back to the sewing machine and connect your two ends so that this gap is fully enclosed. All right, this is what the crib is looking like with that crib sheet that we just made. So it fits nicely on the tops. It'll actually pull a little bit tighter after you wash and dry it. But there you have it.